So let's talk about uh, United Monday. Arab Emirates and Israel. And God Emperor Trump brought us world peace. So How funny. great. Well, well, speaking of anti-Semitic stereotypes, you, you, do you know what the official name of the, the peace agreement signed between the UAE and Israel is? Mm -mm. This is what? so good. The Abraham Accords. Oh, right. The thing about this UAE agreement is it doesn't really change anything. Trump, in some ways, understands elements of marketing. In some ways, he doesn't understand it at all. In this case, it's pure marketing. And, and maybe you, you shouldn't credit Trump. Maybe we should credit Jared Kushner. But they understood that a lot of Americans are just going to hear, oh, there was a peace agreement signed with Israel. Maybe Trump really did bring peace to the Middle East, but it's ridiculous. The UAE already had a de facto alliance with Israel that was known for a while. In fact, the UAE was allegedly, there have been some very, very likely reports, like Harar, Haaretz reported, which is a major Israeli newspaper, that the UAE actually had been doing weapons sales with Israel. So b behind the scene, not, not so covertly. So, and it was also apparently the UAE was a middleman that was used by other countries in the Middle East that wanted to do weapon sales and technology sales for drones and surveillance technology with Israel. They would go through the UAE because they knew that the UAE had a, a constant back channel with Israel. So this is just officially confirming what we've known for a long time. And that's because the reality is that these Gulf monarchies, first of all, they have basically no sovereignty. The UAE is largely a satellite of the U.S. This is a very new country. It's only existed for several decades. And it only exists as a country because first the British Empire and then the American Empire, they agreed to have a kind of protection agreement where they, the, the U.K. and the U.S. will protect the Saudi monarchy and the Bahraini monarchy and the UAE monarchy the UAE has, they, they, you know, they have this agreement, basically. It's, it's a de facto unspoken agreement. But in the case of the Saudi Arabia, it's, it's, it's an actual agreement that was made when Franklin Delano Roosevelt, on his last Valentine's Day, I always point out, on his last Valentine's Day, 1945, there's a famous photo of him sitting with his translator and the king, Ibn Saud, who was the, the founder of the Saudi monarchy. And the agreement was, he, he literally said this, you can find this in, the, in the, the State Department declassified cables now, the records from the State Department, uh, the, of the record of the historian. They acknowledged that there was an agreement made and the US said, under FDR said, we're going to protect you in return for your oil. And that the UAE is a very similar, I mean, s situation. The UAE also has natural gas, but and the UAE is a little more complex because the UAE is a, has several different monarchs that are kind of federated together. But the reality is that it has no sovereignty. The UAE just does what the U.S. and, to a lesser extent, Europe want it to do. And but but that's also that's that's one part of it. But then the other main part we have to understand: the reason this has been coming for a long time is because the UAE, the real concern is not Israel. The real concern is what we can call the axis of resistance. That's what they call themselves, the resistance axis, which would be the forces that, that fight against U.S. imperialism and against Israel, which would be represented by Iran, Syria, to an extent Iraq, and, and Lebanese Hezbollah, and also the, the Houthi movement in Yemen. And the Gulf monarchies are terrified of those groups because those groups represent the, the only real threat in the region to overthrowing the the Gulf monarchies. So all this is, this is marketing that Kushner, he got his friends in the Gulf monarchies to sign some agreements on paper, confirming what already had happened so they can try to help boost Trump for the election. I don't think it's gonna change anything at all. It's pure marketing. And this is true for Bahrain too. Also we to keep in mind that Bahrain, so in, in terms of like the, the balance of power, Saudi Arabia is, is a, in the region is quite powerful but it's also largely an extension of U.S. power. So they will only be able to do so much that they can't bite the hand that feeds them of the U.S. The U.S. sometimes allows them to kind of, you know, have a longer leash and do what they want. But Bahrain has even less sovereignty because Bahrain is much smaller. Bahrain is right off the coast of Saudi Arabia. It's a tiny country. And Bahrain is largely controlled by Saudi Arabia, which is in turn controlled by the U.S. And what happened is that there were big protests in Bahrain during the so-called Arab Spring. People wonder, why weren't there protests in the Gulf monarchies? There were, 
they were viciously, brutally repressed immediately. They weren't allowed to happen. And of course, in places like Libya and Syria, the U.S. supported the protests, which is why they, they escalated into a civil war. The protests in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia were immediately crushed. And in Bahrain, the there's a situation where the, the population is split. And it's actually an example of, of, of like genetic engineering, but it's like, it's like cultural engineering where in the recent past, the majority of the Bahraini population was Shia. And now what happened is that recently the, the Bahraini monarchy, which is Sunni and, and very closely influenced by the Wahhabi Saudi monarchy, which is a very extreme distortion of extremist Sunni Islam. It doesn't represent the majority of Sunnis. I'm not trying to say that I'm not trying to say that all Sunnis are extremists, but they represent a distortion of extremist Sunni Islam. And they see Shia as heretics. They actually hate Shia more than they hate other religions. They, they hate Shia more than they hate Jews and Christians. So it's like equal, equal opportunity hatred. So in Bahrain, they've like culturally engineered Shia to make them the minority because they feared that the, the Sunni monarchy feared that the Shia majority would rise up and overthrow them. This is also true in Saudi Arabia that there, there is a Shia minority, which has a very strong resistance movement. And you might remember that Sheikh Nimr al -Nimr, he was a very prominent pro-democracy activist who was beheaded. He was executed in Saudi Arabia under the Obama administration. The Obama administration defended it um, because they said that he was engaged in terror activities, which is a lie. But he was a Shia pro-democracy activist. So in Bahrain, similarly, there's a big Shia community of pro-democracy activists and they have a lot of protests and Saudi Arabia of course with the US backing militarily invaded Bahrain to crush the protests because the Bahraini monarchy was unable to contain it so Bahrain signing an agreement with Israel is even less significant it means nothing and it's widely suspected and I think it's going to happen in the next few weeks before the election on the eve of the election Saudi Arabia is going to sign a peace agreement with Israel it means nothing They've been allied right. de facto for years. 